to start, <laughs> Melissa, could you introduce us to The Cleaning Lady and what fans can expect from the series? Okay, so The Cleaning Lady is a, a character-driven drama with crime elements, uh, female empowerment moments. Uh, it really is like a nice mix of genres where uh, the characters are very grounded, but the plot is sometimes explosive and exciting and unexpected, but the characters always react to those crazy moments in a very grounded way. So um, if you like shows like This Is Us and The Sopranos, it's kind of like this great melange of like um, character family dramas mixed with exciting thrillery moments. Martha, what was it about this particular character and project that stood out to you? Um, for me, first and foremost, it was, um, you know, centered on the Filipino culture and the fact that I could actually, um, you know, play a Filipino uh, role. Um, I've played uh, Filipino roles in the past, but to actually play one that is, you know, consistently throughout the series as a series regular was just incredible because um, normally I'm playing day, you know, uh, guest starring roles and everything. So to really live out uh, the character fully was just um, a phenomenal experience for me. And of course, Fiona um, is just unpredictable and chaotic and emotionally volatile. So that in itself was just so much fun to just go through every day. <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah. The, the character that I feel like has the most um, comedic relief that they can go from an angst driven sobbing place to a joking place in the same scene is is Martha's character Fiona De La Rosa. like it, it is amazing her range as an actress that she's able to literally go from making you laugh to making you cry within the same scene is such a gift and a skill. A lot of actors don't have that. Like to, we always say, here comes the waterworks. Like she'll just step on set. And you, you know, some actors have to step away. They have to like smell something that makes their eyes water. They have to play sad music. Martha, you're just like, okay, maybe you could try this version where you kind of tear up. And it's just like on, on cue, like the tears like spring out of her eyes. So it, it is, she's she's just an amazing actress that has a range that is exciting to write for and once we saw that range and knew that she could handle it we've really been leaning in as writers uh to to that place of knowing that you can really be with her laughing one moment and crying the next yeah, for me, I'm always excited um, whenever I read the episodes that are coming up. I, I'm just like, where is Fiona going to go? And it's, it is, it's just one minute of just emotional shifts, but it's so um, beautifully challenging. And just to be present there, to experience this, I'm incredibly grateful to the writers just to have this like emotional bliss every day. So yeah, really appreciate it, Melissa. Thank you. Uh, it's such a joy to be able to work with someone who can actually, like when you write a scene knowing that you can just take off with it and, and surprise us with what you bring it's, it's such it is such a joy the, the other fun thing is that we've really been able to arc out fiona de la rosa's character who at the beginning she goes from someone who's been used to operating in the shadows she's a tnt tago and tago where every decision she makes whether it's to uh go to the grocery store or uh take a job where she might not know what she's getting into that everything is based on weighing the the chances of being caught and deported uh, against just everyday life she goes from that to a character who starts speaking out for herself and starts to feel more and more empowered to take up space and is really pushed to the limits partly through helping um tony her sister-in-law she really does start to take on some of the those risks that tony has to take to save her son she starts to and not that she's influenced by that but de definitely there is a there are moments where she's almost afraid to 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 go out into the the world in her minivan and then she's confronting people head on who are people in power and it's it's just a very exciting arc this season that fiona goes on yeah speaking of that arc uh martha without giving out any spoilers there's the whole episode five is such an emotional roller coaster throughout. For you as an actress, how did you prepare for that episode? 
That was, um, I mean, for me, just reading the script, I started crying, you know, and um, I didn't even have to go to lengths in terms of just trying to um, connect because it was just feeling what what is going on in the scene. And then at the same time, just the fact that you're on set and you are truly in cages and that guards are patting you down. The physical connection of that viola uh, violation is just so powerful that it affected me. And at the same time, you know, um, Fiona as a mother, um, being in that situation is, is just, it's now or never, and she'll lose everything. And that's constantly been in her mind, but her nightmare is right in her face. So for me, it was all about just being um, present with what was happening in that moment and just really experiencing it as a person, whether it was Martha or Fiona, um, that, that just I connected to straight away with just the visceral um, um, violence uh, that happens or not violence, but just in terms of violation of yeah. a person's rights. So it was, yeah, extremely emotional for me, but incredibly um, challenging as an actor, but to just go through, as Melissa had mentioned, you know, the, the levels of, of yes, tell, if, you've, if you've watched episode five, Right. So just the, the moments that she has with her colleague to finding just solace in being there and in finding the just some sort of hope to just really, you know, being um, possibly deported. It is just this jarring emotional kind of shift that will lend you to just go there emotionally. I mean, for me as an actor anyway, I just didn't just being there in those cages and being wrapped in those blankets was enough for me to to um, understand what you know, what those what those people have gone through. Melissa, you and Miranda have been working on this project since 2019. How did this partnership originally form, and how are you feeling three weeks ahead of its premiere? So excited for the premiere because because of the COVID shutdown and lockdown, we have been working on this project. I think I first got the phone call to to look at Miranda's work and pages in end of September of 20, did you say 2018? Is that right? 2019? 2019, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so it's, yeah, I can, with COVID brain, it's hard to even remember. But so we, we have been working on this a really long time. So she had um, a pitch is about five pages long. I read the pages. I watched some of the Argentinian, the original um, show, and just felt like it had all the elements of a hit. You know, a woman, her, the, the main character, Tony De La Rosa's drive is so strong. A woman who will go to any lengths to save her son. And so many people can relate to, and then that, that broadens out to this family that will do anything for each other. You know, Fiona is a, a woman who will do anything for her children. Tony will do anything for her son. They'll do anything for each other. So these are all relatable themes. Um, I got a little off track, but working on this project together with Miranda is great. She really did, she took the original format and then she developed it so that you have a Southeast Asian family, you're setting it in Las Vegas, you're dealing with um, undocumented workers in a way that the, the undocumented and what they go through. So that's just not a st statistic on the news. You're actually walking in the shoes of these characters that you love and seeing how, how really it's such a bureaucratic system, how difficult it is to get citizenship, how even the path to citizenship changes all the time, depending on who's president. What, what, you know what administration is in place so all of these things I, f I feel like what's exciting about the cleaning lady is it's really a trojan horse to to send into american homes where it it it's it's coming off as this exciting thrillery crime drama which it is but we also explore a range of real topics immigration what does the american dream mean to each individual who comes to these shores and America has always been a place where everyone from America is from someplace else. And we tend to forget that, that this is a young country. It's only a 200, 200, I might be bad with my math, but it's roughly 200, 225 years uh, where everyone has come from someplace else. We're all immigrants. We all have a history of immigration from someplace else. So, and then we also have Armenian families. We have 
uh, an Argentinian lead. We have a Mexican American lead. Um, we we have the characters speak multiple languages. The American dream means something. It's it's the same dream that we all have. I think at coming to America, but it also means slightly different things depending on what perspective and how long people have been in this country. And we explore all those issues in a fun, thrillery, exciting way. So I'm just so excited for people to see it because Miranda and I literally worked on episode two. We wrote that episode together and we of course arced out the season together. And we worked on that episode almost an entire year, mm. which is too long. No one should ever have to do that. But it was, uh, it meant we really thought about the series thoroughly like the reason why we have five great episodes that journalists can yeah. see is we've been talking and thinking and talk about being present and being in the moment with this show every day for almost two years and and to add to that as well i think like in a sense i mean in, in, you know it's groundbreaking in in every way where um uh you know the actors uh, the writers um uh, pretty pretty much we're all are all represented uh, culturally in in that sense and it's just a great representation of what the world is of how the world is today and um yes and and also just the the issues that we do experience um it's a it's also poses the question and, and as melissa said you know um it forces or not forces but it actually asks the question of uh, how would you feel if you were in their shoes? What would you do and how far would you go as a family, uh, you know, for your family? Um, and I think that that's, that's always, I see that on our promos all the time. How far would you go? <laughs> you know, <laughs> which is true. And, and it really makes you, once you ask the question to yourself, you know, you will have a better understanding of what everybody's going through, I think, so. Yeah, speaking of that family, uh, at, the, at the center of this story is that family and, it's, and the extreme lengths that they'll go to protect each other. Martha, how did you, Ellie, and the rest of the cast build that bond that we see on screen? Uh, we're actually, we've been so lucky in terms of just the camaraderie and um, the authenticity with our friendships off screen as well, that obviously it you, you comes across on screen. But at the same time, you know, our connection, um, in, in terms of, of Fiona and her children, it's real in a sense that she really wants to give her children a better life. But it's also the, the decisions and the actions that she's you know, taken, there are consequences. And um, as Melissa said, the evolution of her, of her character throughout the uh, season, you see her um, empowering herself by, I guess, rectifying the, the choices that she made earlier on. So um, in terms of the connection, that just, that's, from you know the bottom of our hearts all the time as, as people is we do want to give to our families, our friends, et cetera. And you see that off screen as well. The way we are off screen is like, we are, we're like family. It's almost, sometimes we like, not fight, but we just definitely tease each other like family. <laughs> so I think that's where the chemist, you see that you know on screen as well. And the connection is pretty real, so. Yeah, the connection is completely real, completely real. Um, I probably shouldn't say this, but towards the end, I had a couple of directors saying, Martha and Elodie are, are laughing too much. This is a serious scene coming up. Like, do you, can you get a hold of them? <laughs> like, can you say anything? I'm like, they'll calm down. They'll calm down. It's okay. I mean, we really, we laugh a lot working together. And that's a great thing that when you're looking forward to going to work, you're looking forward to seeing each other, a family, a, a sort of family, not even a sort of family, like we're family. Yeah. Yeah, we miss each other right now. We all do. Um, and even even in real life, like, uh, you know, Elodie and I have our Tony and Fiona moments um, when we're doing our driving. <laughs> Worst drivers ever. We, do, we have uh, very good driving skills, apparently. And when we do it on set, everybody is fully aware that we're both yeah. going to be doing our driving. Yeah. Well, we have debates and it was tested on one of our la the last day where I, I was like, OK, they're both admittedly terrible drivers, but they literally have to go just, it was a blocked off street. It was not even 400 yards. And literally they would, Elodie would drive, stop, talk, 
drive, stop talk. It's like they literally can't drive and act at the same time. So we will no longer be doing that unless we have a picture you, car. You have to keep in mind the kind of kind of car we're driving. It's this yes, beat it up minivan. A, yeah, it's a beat up minivan. And you're a New Yorker and she was raised in Paris. So neither of you, I think you both are, do you even have a driver's license? <laughs> I do, but it's an Australian driver's license. And we drive on the left-hand side of the road. So I did have to do some adjustments. Yeah, driving and acting is, it's not easy. I, I, I haven't done it. I'm not gonna claim to think it's easy. <laughs> but no, it's, a, it's such a good group and everyone really did get along. We didn't have any, we didn't have any divas. We didn't have any people who with outsized egos, we didn't have anyone that was trying to compete with each other. It was literally a, such a care, watching the actors, such a caring, giving environment where everyone was present for each other and they're off camera for each other, like wanting to just give their all take after take after take. And it was just wonderful to watch it. It was just, it made coming to work a pleasure. It was not even work. Like yeah, really we get paid for this? Like it's amazing. So. <laughs>